Should we should we start again? Yeah, just start it fresh, bro. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Do whatever makes your heart feel good. All right. Welcome to Comics and Chronic. I am one of your hosts, Jake FH. This is a show where we talk about all things comic books, whether it's TV, film, toys, action figures, and of course, the actual comic books themselves. We are joined by two very talented people. Uh, I have the honor of introducing Anthony Iannaccio and Cody Wallaka Cannon. Welcome to the show, you guys. What up? Woo, 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 woo. Woo, woo. Uh, for all first-time listeners, uh, the three of us met doing stand-up comedy in New York City roughly a decade ago. Yeah, uh, yeah man. Very, very funny people. It's crazy that uh, if that that it feels like like forever ago, but at the same time, no time at all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, they say that's the sign of a good friendship, right, guys? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. I definitely, I definitely lie to people when I say. I, I don't really mention that I went to stand-up comedy school because I think now, in hindsight, the fact that we had to go to school for it is kind of embarrassing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, we're so stupid. <laughs> we need an education. Like, when, whenever I mention it to people, they're like, you went to clown school? Like, clown yeah. like clown college? I'm like, no. Like, I, I mean, I forget I even said it. Like, I, I'm just at that point. <laughs> My trick is I just say, oh, I was taking classes in uh, writing and acting and improv. That's what yeah. I say. I, I just lie and say I went to Tish and then... <laughs> 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 but uh no but because have you guys ever seen uh that show green room with all the comedians speaking no no really? is it was it like on showtime yeah it is used it... to be on showtime with paul Preventer. yes I, yeah i did see that yeah, yeah. Dude, so there's a good episode with like uh like larry sanders and and mark Marin and bo burnham oh and that's the only one i saw actually so there yeah. you go <laughs> so burnham says he took a stand-up comedy class and you could and you could see all of them just start shitting on him and it's like well i'm not gonna mention i went to comedy school in that case <laughs> yeah well we just essentially paid some man seven grand to become homies and that's it yeah, most expensive French of my life, but well worth it. <laughs> yeah, well worth it. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Hey, you guys are done. Get the fuck out of comedy school. Yes. Yeah, you guys remember uh, when he was trying to get, like, actual co- college accredi- accredited? Oh, yeah. Like, it would actually count towards some- But we knew that wasn't going to happen. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, like, what credits would that possibly cover? <laughs> Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, could you imagine a four year program there? Oh, God. A four yeah, year program. I'm glad Getting a bachelor's that. degree in comedy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, yeah. shit, let, let's get into it. You guys, uh, Cody, we'll start with you because you're kind of killing it in. Uh, the local yeah. comedy scene. Cody Cannon had the honor of opening up for Kyle Kinane. You've played a few festivals. You even did your first LA set out here in March of 2020. 2020. At Flappers uh, Comedy Club. Uh, you killed it. And you followed, what's his name? Adam from... Uh, Adam Knover or whatever? Yeah, yeah, from Adam Ruins Everything. Oh, yeah. shit, I didn't know that, Cody. That's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, I, I had a great... That show felt great for me. I had a great time. Um, yeah, I'm so I'm a comedian from West Virginia. I was like, 10 years ago, I started pursuing stand-up comedy. That's where I met these goons. I moved to New York. I brought my brand-new child and his mother with me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> her being from small town West Virginia never lived anywhere ever in her life and I was like you know what's perfect for this Brooklyn baby yeah. <laughs> and uh, that didn't work out and neither did stand up comedy so I was like ah maybe I should be a dad and <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll give this fatherhood thing a try now <laughs> comedy to <didn't> pan out <laughs> <laughs> what's your name again <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um so and like i stopped doing comedy for like 
I don't know, like maybe six years or something like that. And then uh, I moved to a college town to work and go to college, which also didn't pan out. Um, I'm just really good at starting and never finishing anything. Uh, (laughs) um, And started doing comedy again and uh, had some just like, I don't know, uh, really kind of like helped this grow this local comedy scene in small college town, West Virginia. I've had the pleasure of like getting some pretty dope artists through here. Kyle Kinane came through and I was one of his openers. Uh, We've had a bunch of, we've had a bunch of other ones. We had our first festival planned for April of 2020. And then uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but we had to put it off. So um, here I am now, just kind of You, do, you don't know what happened in 2020? <laughs> that, led to, that led to the playoffs? Oh my god! <laughs> 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 oh, no, some, some weird thing happened. I just, everyone started going crazy. I don't know. I was high for most of it, so I couldn't yeah, tell you. <laughs> you know, just, I got bronchitis, so I started eating a lot. <laughs> yeah, Cody was just so sincere about that. I was just like, I'm going to let it, I'm gonna let it pass. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought there was going to be like a joke afterwards. I was like, oh no, he's not. No, the joke he was. <laughs> I didn't know you fucks. I know. I just was trying to like sincerely play it off like I didn't, you know? Which means, which means my acting skills are getting better. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah, Hell yeah. Uh, should we make offensive jokes on here? Because yeah, of course. Okay, well, and all I was gonna say in relation to my acting, all those years of gaslighting girlfriends paid off. <laughs> <laughs> we might, we might want to chop that off. We make- should the offensive jokes we make paint you in a bad light? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'd be sick. <laughs> And then Anthony Inaccio is a freelance writer from the Bronx, who the boogie down. Tell us about your 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 writing stint on the David Letterman show. Oh no! Wait, wait a minute! I never wrote on the oh, David Letterman. No, 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 no! I wish that would be fucking awesome. No, I was um I was yeah. an intern. Hey, I was a, I was a production it. intern. Yeah, I okay. met David Letterman. That was cool, you know. But uh, I I got to uh you know be in the actual uh, control room of the late show. So like while it was going on, I was there for like a bunch of live tapings. I mean, it sucked because they didn't pay the interns when we were there. That was the worst thing about it, but it was like my favorite job. I didn't get paid, but my favorite job of all time, it was just fun. And that's where I met Emily, my fiance. So it had a lot of cool, you know, benefits he in definitely lied to that. Emily and said he was a head writer for the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm a showrunner. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm David Letterman's son. Yeah. <laughs> Although, like the one time I ran into him, like he 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 wasn't allowed to like you know befriend interns or really like talk to them because of like the scandal involving him and an intern a while back. Ooh, I don't even know. Yeah, I didn't know there was one. Fill me in, Betty boy. (laughs) He he definitely, he definitely slept with an intern. Like, I mean, everyone knew about it, and it just kind of. That's I don't know. That's all I know. He slept with an intern. I don't think she was underage, but she was definitely like younger. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, good for him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is going to paint me as a monster. I, I, I like Cody, less- it's all you. You're doing it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, no, Letterman, Letterman was cool. Cody's not a monster. Cody's not a monster. <laughs> Anthony's not a liar. I'm not a liar. See, I could have been like, yeah, I was a writer on The Late Show. It was golden times back then for comedy. <laughs> Anthony was easily the strongest writer in our uh, in our stand-up uh, class. Yeah, for sure. No no sure. question. I mean, I was competing with you guys, so like, it wasn't that hard. Hey. Not much of a Damn. Jake, Jake was so unprepared yeah. Yeah. before Anthony and finished. Jake was like, "Yeah, man, uh, I'm not much of a writer." <laughs> I'm trying to be modest out here. Yeah, you it's know? true. You're not. No, I'm just. No, LA is a humbling place. You guys write great stand up. I mean, that's writing. Yeah, you know, I don't do as much stand up as other people that I'm friends with out here, but. uh 
I'm still funnier, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's how you're going to get famous is by just being funnier. Oh, uh, yeah. Just by being <laughs> cooler. <laughs> <laughs> cool guy. <laughs> this, is a, this is a special episode because it is our first episode. <laughs> yes. And it comes on the heels of uh, Marvel's release of WandaVision on Disney+. Plus. So subscribe to us if you want to get a Disney Plus <laughs> account. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be that's what that's what comes with our Patreon. We give out our Disney Plus yeah. accounts. <laughs> We're just going to find someone's username and password and give it to them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Disney, please don't sue us. <laughs> we, <laughs> we don't have enough money to pay you. Yeah, we so anyway. Want... Oh, sorry. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so we also, because of WandaVision, we decided to read uh, an important Marvel arc that we thought had to, I mean, they're definitely borrowing parts from it. Uh, Marvel's House of M story arc. Woo! It's pretty cool. I've actually never read it until now. Oh, really? That was your first time reading it? This is my first time reading it. Nice. It was very sweet. I liked it a lot. I didn't realize it was so short. Yeah, I mean, eight issues. Yeah, it's. I guess there a lot of a lot of events can be like 12 issues most of I the time. I feel like events are never... I feel like events are smaller uh, in Marvel than they are in DC. Maybe yeah, I'm see, I'm, I'm going more off DC because DC's arcs tend to be pretty long. Yeah, I, right. I mean, uh, Long Halloween was like 12 issues. Mm-hmm. 13, I mean, 13. 12 issues, also like three books. I mean, because you have Long Halloween, then you have Dark Victory, and then you have Haunted Night. All three of them are together. That's like at least 50 issues. True, true. All right, let's get into WandaVision. But before we do, we should all take a little puff to ease our, you know, ease our minds. Frustrations. <laughs> ease our frustrations. To get, to, to, to put ourselves in Wanda's head. <laughs> Cody, what are you popping on? Just uh, some flour, I think, right now. It's uh, maybe train wreck. No, uh, train wreck might be the flavor. Nice. Anthony, what are you puffing on? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's called uh, uh, California Earthquake, actually. Nice. nice. <laughs> Just what Jake deserves. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm puffing on some uh, a stizzy. And it is Purple Punch. Purple Punch. So first two episodes of WandaVision came out last week. What do you guys think? I'm a fan. I'm excited to see where it goes creatively. But also in the first two episodes, it was like 100% just set up and not there. For like people who aren't reading more into it, there wasn't much. It was just like, oh, here's a modern take on, you know, spin on classic shows yeah i uh i get the setup i feel like honestly it didn't really take two episodes and i feel like it's kind of a waste of time yeah i think they're they're obviously trying to be you know do something like building it up for sure yeah like like because this week's episode really made me feel like uneasy the first two, I feel like it's it's definitely a slow burn. So, like, I think we all feel the same way because we're used to, like, jumping into, like, the action or just... I, I think of, like, the Watchmen show. Did you guys watch the Wat- HBO Watchmen show? Dude, that definitely. show was un- incredible. It was incredible, but, you know, the first few episodes, you don't really know exactly what's going on. And by the end of the series, you, you know, like, the whole story. Like, you know what they were trying to do. At least, and you at least, you know, you're not lost as much as you were throughout the show. You know what I mean? I feel like this show, we need to wait until the episodes are all out together until we're like, okay, this is what they were trying to do from episode one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying that it wasn't bad. I'm just saying that like what they fed us right now was just like there and not, it was more just like, Ooh, what Easter eggs can I find? What can I try to pick up on that they're hinting at? But like, In the first episode, there was only a moment where, like, everything kind of went... There's, like, periods of time where everything gets kind of fever dreamy and shit. Mm -hmm. And with each episode, there's more and more of those moments. But the first one, it was just, like, only when dude was choking. 
Right. That's yeah. that's your, like your first hint. Which was really creepy. I actually like that scene a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that's I'm saying. Like sick. the show is like it's almost like a horror show. And I feel like it's going to get more like that as the episodes go on. Also, yeah. do you guys, uh, are we jumping right in? Uh, do you have any guesses to who the villain is? Well, like, okay. Yes, but I don't know how much of it, how much of it is influenced without me having read shit on the internet. Uh, uh, see, I never read shit. I just like let find stuff out. I don't like looking into the spoilers or getting being the first to get news. I just want to see it unfold. You know, well, the spoilers I, I've read so far, I have been wrong, honestly. So I don't really mind. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I don't um, like spoilers. You know, I, I I do enjoy people's theories, but so who do you who do you who are you guys guessing for the villain? So you guys read House of M, right? We talked about House of M, how it yeah. might turn in now like you could say the villain of house of m is it wanda or is it who ultimately like influences her to Mm -hmm. you know do what she does her brother exactly that character that character is not in the universe anymore right but we you know they're gonna do okay so this is my theory not based on reading shit online it's just my my fanboy who the villain is a lot because a lot of people online are saying mephisto and i don't see that i don't know why they would need to do that anyway like why do you need to bring mephisto who's the devil in the Marvel universe. Why is like, you don't need that for this story for like, I think Quicksilver. Cause okay. So for the casting for the show, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, I don't think he's in it or he might have a cameo and he played. I disagree. And I think we've actually seen him already. Okay. So, so what do you, what do you mean by that? Okay. So I think in the second episode, he's the dude in the beekeeper outfit. That's Quicksilver. You're saying, I think that's Quicksilver. And so when she sees him, because if you watch it again, you can see, while they, obviously you can't see that dude's face, right. you can see he has like white shaggy hair and she looks at him and says no and then rewinds the reality. Hmm. You Have you ever heard of the Marvel villain Swarm? Swarm, no. It's So Swarm is a Nazi made of killer bees. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> nice. I don't think it's him, it's- <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, no. But so also, I think it's also him because in this most recent episode, the one that aired today, she freaks out when that dude, Mo- when Monica mentions her brother. Again. Right, right. So whenever like either she hears about him or as I theorize, sees him, I think. And that wasn't in the spoilers. I honestly think that's, oh, wait, that, you, that was you him. called that was her Monica him. and they haven't told us that she's Monica yet. We know that, but they haven't told us in the show that she's Monica Rambeau. Oh, Monica. Yeah. Monica, the little girl from Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. We don't know that yet, but we know that because we read the behind the scenes and we know that's who she is. As well, she also had that necklace and then gets zapped out of the world. Right in the in the newest episode. And the helicopter also in the last two episodes had that same symbol. The sword. Yeah. And in Marvel, sword is like shield of outer space, but I don't think that's what they're going to be in the MCU because it doesn't seem space related. No, I thought I thought sword was like home threats and shield is other like local threats. No, I thought like sword is like they have like a a satellite. You know how like JLA has like the watchtower in <clears throat> in outer yeah. space. That's what they have. That's what sword is. Oh, okay. Oh man. So that's why you shouldn't smoke weed <laughs> and try to make informed decisions on things. Because I thought that sword symbol necklace. I thought that was an upside down cross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> this is Mephisto. My, my girl here is Mephisto. So <laughs> see, that's <laughs> actually that's actually what's all over the internet is that Mephisto is the villain. Yeah. Well, I didn't know. I didn't even know that. I just saw the upside down cross. And I was <laughs> like, my girl. Fuck yeah, they're bringing Satan into this thing, and I'm here for that. Well, they might because Sword is mentioned on Agents of Shield and. Agents Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had Ghost Rider, and Ghost Rider's villains are all like, you know, the devil and shit like that. Well, also, here's my theory on why it's Mephisto. Okay, go. For one, Mephisto is the way. There's a there's a storyline in Spider-Man where he makes a deal with Mephisto, or something happens and everybody forgets that Spider-Man's... That's how, like... Mephisto tying to Doctor Strange and fucking Spider-Man and like the Spider-Verse and the whatever Strange and the whatever of Madness. Madness. Yeah, dude, I think all of those, I think Mephisto could become a heavy hitter and they could just be introducing him in WandaVision. Interesting Hmm. theory. See, this is what I, why I don't think that is like, 
because Wanda's powers are all about like manipulating reality, right? Yeah. And um and like I think the first or second episode of the show, like you pick up like you hear a transmission that's getting picked up, and there and there's a guy and he's saying, Wanda, who's making you do this? Who's making you do this? I don't think it's Mephisto, you know. I think Wanda's powers and with the House of M storyline that it's like based on. I think it's. I I don't think you need the devil to influence her. She already has enough problems that she needs like the devil coming in saying, "Oh, here, this is this is what how you should shape reality." Well, so also like what the show is doing is that we obviously something has happened between Endgame and now because honestly, like at the end of Endgame, she seems pretty fine. True. So what happened between then and this show that she's all fucked up? Hmm. Okay, that's a good point. Because you know what I mean? It ends literally the last time you see her is at Tony Stark's funeral. And she's like, oh, you know, I wish he knew that like we won. And Hawkeye says that he knows. And then that's it. She seems fine. It doesn't look like, like you know. No, I can't remember this. At the end of Endgame, is Vision alive again? No, or- he's dead. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah he, so yeah. maybe that's why she goes insane is because she lost him. Right. I could see that. That would that would, that's my theory too. That you know maybe like really? maybe there's a scene they haven't showed us yet where she like goes to pick up like Vision's, Vision's carcass. You know, like he's just she's just like carcass. It's fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, wrong word. I, mean, I just know that like vision's like a living vibrator, so <laughs> I would be sad if I, I lost that shit too. You know what I mean? She probably yeah. just sensitized herself. <laughs> no well, matter what, what. If, because she kills Vision herself the first time in uh, Infinity War, and you know because she got her powers from Vision's stone. Is that true or no? Yeah, the Mind Stone. Yeah, she did. Yep. So what if breaking the Mind Stone fucked with her as well? Ooh, I like that. And because she gets snapped away in Infinity War, for those of us that read Marvel, we, we know that like there's a soul world or whatever, and then she gets brought back. What if like all of those three things, the breaking of the Mind Stone, the being snapped away and then snapping back, like just fucked with her. And But now, so if she has like seen the other side or whatever, she's seen like other dimensions and her mind can start to like open shit. That makes sense. Regardless, I th- I'm so glad that uh, Marvel's doing this, that like they're getting into weirder, like I, I it, like it's not like the, as a, as things now stand, it's not like oh the end the world depends on this moment. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. like more just for these characters. Yeah, I like that too. But I sorry, I yeah. just to go back. Like I just remembered something from the new episode. Uh, there's like the fake commercial that they've been doing in each episode, and in this one, there were, it was like Hydra soak. And, yeah, and, and it like the the narrator, the voiceover of the commercial was like heavily suggesting like, oh, we'll make you like all your wildest dreams come true. You can live in like any re- like it made it seem like maybe the people that are behind this is, it you know, maybe it's Hydra. Hydra. Yeah, because Hydra created oh, her in Quicksilver. Shit. Yeah, you're right. But uh, what if. I guess, damn. It's only based on that <laughs> that one commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I was, my mind was going somewhere. And it just <laughs> <laughs> what if? Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm intrigued to see like where it goes. I hope it kind of picks up. Honestly, I'm definitely a little over the whole like, dude. Because I, I clocked it for this third episode. It was 18 minutes in before it starts to get like, yeah, something's up in this world. And it's like, all right, we, like it's a, it's, a, it's a 30 minute episode. Like, come on, we're we're ready. Yeah, yeah. You're not wrong. Like, that's that's the show's like weak point right now. It's like we're watching yeah. because we love the MCU so much. I don't know if someone who wasn't really into it why they would like be that interested in this show. I mean, it's kind of cool yeah. that it's like. I wish, honestly, it wasn't that she was going crazy and it was more about, like, her and Vision trying to actually, like, live, like, a life without, like, it being, like, corny sitcom references, you know what I mean? Because there's a cool comic, there's a cool Vision comic by Tom King, which is, like, the Vision living a life with, like, his Vision wife and his Vision kids and his Vision dog. So if Vision is a robot, does that mean he, he ejaculates, like, robotic sperm that can impregnate women? Cody? Uh, <laughs> Cody, our, our go-to expert on sperm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am the only father of the. Group. <laughs> um, That's uh, true. 
And uh, yes, uh, he's just like, I mean, he, he's got that stone in his nog. He's just, <laughs> uh, I don't I can't remember. I'm high and I can't remember which stone he had. The mine. Was it the mine? mine stone, yeah. 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 So, mine stone, yeah. yeah. Whatever it does, I'm sure that <laughs> plays a part in his semen. <laughs> No, but I mean, like, his anatomy is robotic. Can he actually get a woman pregnant? No, uh, he can't. <laughs> in the comics, he can't. But in our imaginations, that's <laughs> 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 In our deepest <laughs> desires. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's going to be a big part of the story, though. Like, we're, we're, we're joking about it, but, like, in the most recent episode, she has two kids. Where do they come from? You know, they're not, like, half robot. Mm. They look like two humans. And they show up instantly. Right. And we know who those kids are. Those are those are characters that we know. Yeah. Oh, do we? Yeah. They're in the comic. Yeah. Who are they? So they're part of the Young Avengers, which I think where Marvel Wiccan is one of them. Yeah, right? Wiccan and uh Speed. Okay. Speed, I didn't know about Speed. Yeah, Speed is literally like Quicksilver. Like there's no difference like in his powers and how right. he looks basically. And here's another thing about Quicksilver that I got to bring up because they casted Evan Peters, who plays Quicksilver in the Fox X-Men movies. He's in WandaVision, but we don't know who he is yet. I know who he is. Who is he? He's Quicksilver. Yeah, I think he really is Quicksilver. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I think I think because dig this, because Disney now officially owns uh, oh. X-Men, or, you know, Disney bought Fox, or whatever. Right. So you can now, and you know, we have Doctor Strange Two coming up, the multiverse. Spider Man Three has been confirmed to have a few of Spider Man. I think Evan Peters will be Quicksilver from X Men in this show, and it'll just be like an alternate universe Quicksilver. Mm. Like, so I think he's still actually going to be. Quicksilver. You don't think he's going to stick around to be Quicksilver to replace the other Quicksilver, Aaron Taylor Johnson? Yeah. He, I don't see. He might stick around as far as in like future MCU X Men movies. I don't know because I like that Quicksilver. Relation, I like him. Way what better. relation would he have for this? woman like why would scarlet witch be vested in him maybe like i don't know how they're gonna do it but if she's like there was a scene in today's episode where like vision starts to realize shit's going down but then they they cut really abruptly and vision doesn't know what's going on it's like the scene's repeating right it almost looks like like how a dvd would skip or something like back in the day but it was just like a like a skip and i feel like they could easily do that maybe we'll see like a cameo by uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, but it does that, and then suddenly it's Evan Peters, and that's how they switch it. You know, what other explanation do you need? Then it just like she fucked it up, like the multiverse just kind of flip flop. So does that mean that like in the MCU, the X Men don't exist, but because she opens up a multiverse portal or whatever, like they grab from an alternate universe? That's what I'm thinking. Otherwise, how are they gonna just like put them in? Right. Like I know I, I can't. Yeah, that makes the most sense to me. Like they're just gonna. I mean, they've been doing this kind of uh, multiverse. Comic books have been doing multiverse nonsense for like decades now yeah. in comics, and it's always been everybody's been like, "Yeah, okay, we get it." Yeah. Why would it not work? Why would that not translate to the movies? Right? Because DC is going to do the same thing. The Flash movie is going to be a multiverse movie. Michael Keaton Batman is now replacing Ben Affleck. Yeah, but before we jump on DC, uh, I'm, I'm a DC loyalist. Uh, DC did it first ooh. with. Infinite Crisis. True. Crisis of Infinite Earth. Very true. So I just want to I just want to say, you know, as far as multiverses go, DC was the first. Just because M- just because Marvel executes it in film doesn't mean I, you're you're right. You're 100 okay. percent right. So I want to give credit to where credit's due. What do you think Batman smokes out of? <laughs> Batman is yeah, like, bomb. Does use a, yeah, does he use a bat bong? He's like Alfred, get the bat bong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's gonna be just like the most high tech thing. It's not, even gonna be, it's not even gonna have to smoke it. He's gonna like pull a trigger and it just like throws the smoke into his lungs. It's just like Ooh, that'd be poof. cool. <laughs> or or it'll be like little batarangs with, that he smokes out of like <laughs> with wax like <laughs> disposable batarangs he smokes and then throws them at people oh that'd be cool or they're like they're like TCH uh, laced batarangs so when he throws them at you get like really fucked up TCH THC I'm high I'm high oh yeah yeah, he throws them at you, and when they stick in you, you get really fucking high. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me want to become a Batman villain. 
<laughs> Did I tell you I came up with a new comic book villain for my universe? For those of those listeners that don't know, I have my own comic book universe. It's never been written, but it's all in my head. <laughs> yeah, he's got like a slew of characters. Slew all of it's like 80% of the universe is based around cum. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's what it is. It's all based around dicks. <laughs> Big difference there, Cody. Big difference. Yeah, yeah, my bad. I literally have a character named Jiz Nito. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who can manipulate cum? <laughs> 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 you think about it, it makes him really powerful. There's a, there's I, mean, a lot of- I mean, like, in his, yeah, at his most powerful, he could, like, manipulate people's desires and things. Yeah, dude, yeah. exactly. Dude, you know what I actually, let's talk about Magneto for a sec, <laughs> both because he is in House of M, and also his portrayal in the movies. There's always, there's always been one thing I've never liked about how they do him in the movies, and they constantly say it, and it's that he controls metal. Which is like almost very limiting compared to the fact that like he actually controls like magnetism, which that in itself makes him infinitely more powerful than just being able to control metal. Yeah, he's like one of the most powerful mutants of all time. And switch the polarities of the planet if you want. Like, let's fucking get Mar- let's get Marvel in here because they fucked up, Jake, and they need to realize. Kevin that. Feige, you need to explain this to us. <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. Something that's been eating my insides. You're right. I, I actually didn't think of that, but it's like a small detail. No, I'm that- serious. It, yeah, it's small detail. And I know it's nerdy to harp on, but they're always like, oh, he controls metal. It's like, dude, he doesn't just control that. He controls magnetism itself. Yeah, magnetic fields. Yeah, like magnetic, which makes him like super, everything is magnetic. This whole planet, he could take the moon and throw it into, like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, he just do a Although lot. Although one of my favorite movie magnets Magneto moments is when the guy comes into his jail cell and Mystique had given the guy like iron whatever and Magneto like pulls it out of his body. He's like too much iron in your body. Yeah like if Magneto could do that in the comics why doesn't he do that to everybody? Yeah right. Like literally fuck you fuck you iron out of your fucking eyeballs like like, (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah And, and also you don't need to be metal for him to control you and I don't even think they thought about this but the second Wolverine movie proved that in their after credit scene, which ties into Days of Future Past. I don't know if you guys remember it. Which one? Yeah, I don't remember this one. Remind it's me, after, bro. It's after the Silver Samurai Wolverine movie, so it's after yeah. the credits. And Wolverine's about to go through an airport metal detector, and everyone freezes. And he's like, what? And he turns around because he smells Magneto, and he goes to stab him with his claws, which, if you look, if you go back and watch, are, are, are his bone claws. Right. But Magneto still stops him, and he has no metal in him. So, you know what I mean? That's because those movies sucked. When they got to that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, those movies, they were doing all willy-nilly. Yeah. Dude, okay, my biggest beef about the way the movies have done Magneto versus the comics, I hate that he's a frail man. Not Mm. like, and I know, I think Ian McKellen did a fantastic man Magneto, but in the Mm. comics, he's like jacked and just like would could also just like beat the shit out of people with his fists. You know, yeah, but that's also super unrealistic. He's supposed to be like a Holocaust survivor. Right, it's 2021. He would legit be like 95. Yeah, well, also, uh. The first, I mean, yeah, I guess you're right, but also, <laughs> I don't know how Jack the Holocaust survivor. But, can be. but that's interesting because I feel like when they recast Magneto, maybe they're going to have to take that into account. Like that's such a huge part of his character. But if he's a character and like, and if we're MCU timeline, it's past. Like they're in the future already because of Endgame. So if his, see, that's why I think future. Like Charles Xavier and Magneto, I think they're going to be black people. Yeah, I think so. I think they're going to recast with a different race, and, and I think a different race that it makes sense when you're when you're doing it that way. Like you're cha- you're not really changing Magneto; you're just updating him because he can't be a Holocaust survivor anymore. It's like like you said, like he'd be way too old to just. Dude, that would be so fucking sick. I saw a, a fan made photo of Denzel Washington. Wearing a Magneto helmet with a cape and everything. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. That would be insane. I like that. Yeah, that would be a great casting because he's not too old. And, like, before we got into this subject, I was going to be, like, like less. I'm less upset with the movies and more upset we need to, like, encourage Ian McKellen to get buff. <laughs> which I was just going to say. <laughs> I was going to say, but, like, with Denzel, it would be, he'd have way less far to go. You know what I mean? <laughs> they need <Yeah>. McKellen? <laughs> 
Honestly, the way I see it is like Magneto is so powerful. He doesn't need to get jacked. He doesn't need to be jacked, but he also, he's like, he's a man of the, the earth. He's worked hard. He's like always, he wouldn't, he's not the kind of person that would let himself get out of shape. You know what I mean? <laughs> Wait, why not, why not let Ian McKellen live his life? He doesn't need to get buff for Cody. Why does it? Yeah, re- Cody, you're being, you're projecting all these insecurities on Ian yeah, McKellen. Yeah, let, I'm fine let, with let the man, Let the man I age. Just, he could be in a wheelchair. He could play Professor X yeah. and then blow everybody's minds. Just switch. Yeah, Don't that, tell Cody Ian McKellen's gay. Otherwise, we'll hear some homophobic <laughs> slurs, no doubt. What? No, <laughs> I'm just body shaming him. There's a huge difference, bro. I'm not, I'm not shaming his sexuality, just his body. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, dude, you're letting yourself get too old do something about it you would think for a gay man he would actually be in better shape but <laughs> guess not. he was gandalf man come on yeah who would win the fight gandalf or magneto magneto gandalf get his gets his ass kicked all the time that's true gandalf stays dying yeah he if he wasn't so lucky and just like well connected yep <laughs> <laughs> is gandalf well connected you know it <laughs> Everybody loves Gandalf. They're always the eagle. Everybody's helping him out. Everybody's. Everyone's I would helping. watch that sitcom. Everybody loves Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> Gandalf the white or Gandalf the gray would Ooh. lose both both Gandalfs. White would be better chance. <laughs> That's like Super Saiyan Gandalf. Yeah, exactly. Super Saiyan Gandalf. <laughs> Anytime you just like charge. Kamehameha Gandalf. <laughs> He also combs his hair. His hair gets super straight. That's why he's stronger. That's true, yeah. How come there's no Gandalf the Black? Ooh. That's kind of racist. <laughs> it has to be Gandalf we don't, the White. We don't get into, we're not going to get into that. He was in World War I. You know he was racist. <laughs> Wait, Wait, Gandalf? Was Wait Gandalf was in World War I? <laughs> yeah, Tolkien. Was yeah, Tolkien. what the fuck are you? <laughs> Tolkien. Who? J R R. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I guess he. Well, he might have been racist. Who knows? Everyone's. He racist. probably was. He was white and born in the 1900s. And born. He was white, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all it <laughs> that's all it takes for someone to be racist. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, one division will pick up. I'm excited to see what other cameos. We'll see. You can already tell from the trailer uh, what's her name going to be in the show. Kat Dennings. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because she was in the trailer. So that's not really nice. spoiling it. Which, honestly, I don't really care for Kat Dennings other than her nice boobies. But uh, What else is she in? I don't know. Exactly. We don't care. <laughs> she was in that show, Two Broke Girls. Mm. Yeah. Her character yeah. was just the most annoying part about Thor, honestly. I think they're bringing her back for the next Thor, actually. Nice. Yeah, they're bringing her back and Natalie Portman. Yep. Ooh, is Natalie Portman gonna become Thor? Yeah, that's what they're saying. Yes, yeah, Female. I'm ready. And supposedly Beta Ray Bill will be. Ooh, in yes, Natalie Portman. <laughs> <laughs> that's the dumbest thing I've ever said. <laughs> I did have some questions fielded to me from like friends for our show, nice. so I'm gonna so I'm gonna ask one of them. Who would you smoke a blunt with, and why? Which superhero would you smoke a blunt with, and why? I don't want to smoke one with Deadpool because his face is gross, and he would just like take. He would be too much, you know. Yeah, it'd be pretty annoying. Are we talking Marvel, DC? What, can we pick one of each? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's not limit it to Marvel. The show isn't okay. just about Marvel. I feel like Marvel Universe would legalize weed before the DC Universe, though. <laughs> yeah. For sure. For sure. Wait, not enough. Marvel Universe, they outlaw mutants. So they're definitely outlawing... They outlaw mutants, mutants, but they're like, Fantastic Four, do whatever the fuck you want. Spider-Man, do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, Deadpool does whatever he wants, regardless of laws. Have you ever heard Norm MacDonald's bit on Fantastic Four? No. no. Really? Oh, dude, it's pretty funny. It's like an old bit he used to do, but it's basically, he comes up with the name for it. He's like, all right, like, uh, let's see, you can light yourself on fire and do this. We'll call you the Human Torch. And uh, you, you can turn yourself invisible. We'll call you the Invisible Woman. And you, you're just a big pile of rock thingy. We'll call you the Thing. 
And me, I'm really stretchy like a rubber band, so we'll call me Mr. Fantastic. (laughs) (laughs) That's sick. That's sick. I always, who would I smoke a blow with? I'd probably smoke a blow with Green Lantern, so that way he could, like, we could get high. Green Lantern? Uh, Black Green Lantern, of course. John Stewart. John Stewart. <laughs> I don't think John Stewart smokes weed. No, he definitely doesn't. He's a cop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or he's in the military. No, he's a, he's, he's, a, he's a Marine. Guy Gardner is a cop. Oh, yeah, you're John right. John Stewart, isn't he an architect? No, John Stewart's the, uh, what's it called? The military guy. Kyle Rayner's the artist. And then you have Simon Baz and Jessica, whatever. Jessica Cruz. Jessica Cruz. I don't even know. I would smoke Green Lantern so that way he could take us in space and we can do some cool cosmic shit while we're high. Nice. That's a good choice. That's a good choice. For me, DC Universe, I'm probably either going with fucking Shazam. (laughs) (laughs) You're smoking a a 10 year old. (laughs) You're going to lead with a child. (laughs) But he's going to have to stay in adult form the whole time for sure. Um, (laughs) But he's got pretty dope powers. Uh, It would be a lot of fun, I feel like. Yeah. So, silly, silly fun time. You know what I mean? Dude, uh, speaking of silly fun time, <laughs> you guys watch Wonder Woman 1984? <laughs> Dude, we're going to do the whole podcast. Because for that, that was a Yeah, silly. we're going to come back. Yeah, you're right. Right. We'll come back <laughs> for Wonder Woman. Yeah, right now. We're <laughs> That'll be our day. Her day will come. Yeah, yeah her day will come. <laughs> but silly fun time. So, smoke weed with Shazam, DC, uh, Marvel. Probably, dude, I don't know. Five, four. Emma Frost. Nice, okay. (laughs) (laughs) The real answer came out. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that, that's who you really want to smoke with yeah dude i mean she could take me anywhere in my mind and she's a baddie you know <laughs> <laughs> all right someone needs to bonk cody <laughs> bonk. <laughs> <laughs> anthony who, who would you smoke with no so yeah spider-man for sure i feel like peter parker Ooh. can be like, all right just this once what's the worst that could happen and then like everybody dies <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd feel bad, but it'd be cool. Uh, and <laughs> and then in DC, Detective Chimp. I'll smoke with him. He's a talking chimp. The fucking the talking chimp monkey. Yeah, guy? he's he's a better detective than Batman. Why not? Why not? In, if de- instead of Detective Chimp, do Gorilla Grodd? Just fuck Gorilla oh, Grodd. Yeah. He's a piece of shit. Dude, I like Gorilla Grodd. Yeah, I like Gorilla Grodd. He's a cool villain. Yeah, but he, he, he hates humans. Favorite. He's going to be like, you piece of shit human. I'm not Dude, I do too. You. I'm not going to touch yeah. my lips to the same yeah. much as you. <laughs> I won't smoke with humans. <laughs> That's why, Cody, because he's a piece of racist. He, he hates humans. He's racist towards humans. Speciest, I guess. So fuck Gorilla Grodd, Cody. To your question, fuck Gorilla Grodd. <laughs> Dude, I like Gorilla Grodd. But maybe, yeah, maybe he wouldn't be the most fun to get high with. <laughs> yeah, he's always angry, too. Like, he's easily angered. I don't want to smoke with him. He's got a gorilla's temperament, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, gorillas are gentle creatures, so he's giving a bad name to gorillas, actually. So fuck, again, fuck Gorilla Grodd. You're triggering me. <laughs> You're triggering me. I'm hearing a lot, of, a lot of hate towards Gorilla Grodd right now. Uh, dude, I'm just... I like Gorilla Grodd. <laughs> no, he, nah, he's cool. I take it back. Oh, there is one thing I wanted to talk about. It's because Cody and I like the movie Joker. Uh, dude, Anthony, take you you that for another episode. Yeah, bro. we need like three hours for that one, man. Do we? Yeah, well, right now, no. <laughs> yeah. First of all, yeah, we need we need a while for that one. I think a whole podcast yeah. at least. Yeah, exactly. Wonder Woman and uh, those are that for yeah. no. I would love to though, but I yes, I right. Those are I think episode like what we should do is pick some sort of media representation and a comic us go through it and then jump in 
You know what I'm saying? Like, be like, oh, Joker and Brian Azzarello one shot, and we'll do that yeah. as an episode or something. Or like, oh, Wonder Woman 84, let's do Brian Azzarello, bring him back because he's a fantastic writer, do his run on Wonder Woman or something like Batman's that. Batman's dick, let's talk about Brian Azzarello, let's bring him in and talk about that. <laughs> do, wait, Batman's dick, are they related? Yeah, Brian. Hey, Dude, there, hey, there's a book that, here, yeah, uh, Batman Damned. I have that issue. <laughs> I do too, but I, they didn't show his dick in mine. Oh, then you don't have it. You need the issue that <laughs> the first appearance of Batman's dick. It's a real thing. It, it sounds I ridiculous, know. but well, apparently it... it got so much shit from people that they had to edit out the dick from future versions. Yep. Nice. Yeah, it was too big. Too dope. Dick was too dope. <laughs> 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 they couldn't accurately represent it because comics you know they're only two pages they couldn't it just wouldn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. dude it's gonna have, have like be one of those shitty comics that nobody actually wants that like folds out into like a poster, <laughs> like a poster <laughs> out. Dude, I like those comics <laughs> dude I hate them I didn't want I didn't buy a fucking pop up bro- book bro I was at a comic book store a few weeks ago, and there was a local L.A. comic book writer and artist there. So I figure I'll take this time to plug his stuff, because he was pretty cool. I talked to him for like half an hour. Nice. His name is Marcus D. Newsome. He's from Compton, California, and Ooh. he made his own comic. I'll show it to you guys, not that the listeners can see, but called Lightning Strike. Nice. nice. Yeah, this dude's pretty cool. He was telling me that he he writes and draws it, and I was like, I was like, where'd you get the... Uh, here, as you can see, one of the characters has a Compton hat on. Nice. So I thought it'd be nice to plug local, like comic book artists. Where can we? Can you only get that like in LA? Is it not? Uh, I don't know. It's called can you get it on Amazon. Yeah, you're probably on Amazon. Or like, what's the who like? Is it like self published? Does it have like a comic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's self it's published. Oh. He, he prints it himself. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I wanted to give him a shout out because I was like, I was like, you know, I give all my money to these mainstream publishers, but I bought two of his comics because I figured it'd be nice to support like a local dude. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, I was of course telling him about my comic book universe and how we should do a crossover between poop dick and lightning strike. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when, what happens when lightning strikes a poop dick. <laughs> I actually came up with a new character called Chernobyl Changa. <laughs> he was a Honduran international tamale salesman who happened to be at Reactor 4 the day Chernobyl burnt down. <laughs> so radiation imbues him with delicious uh, chimichanga making abilities. And so he becomes Chernobyl Changa. That's the, that won't fly. <laughs> it's like, you're gonna Why was that? Wow. It's canceled the first yeah. episode. <laughs> Over Chernobyl Changa? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't think so. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing it up. It's not bad. I mean, it's bad. I, I don't, don't think it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. No one's... Dude, that's the whole point of my comic book universe is they're supposed to be dumb. Yeah. Yes, there and, like, there's nothing cool about characters named Poop Dick or Jiznita. Like, does does he have like severe like radiation burns? Uh, yes, but he can cook a chimichanga in under less than two seconds. <laughs> wow. so, you but tell me, that, you're really lost. Uh, is that it? Like, is that all his abilities? Is he, that it? Do you know what a radioactive chimichanga can do to somebody? <laughs> Yo, if he throws it, it's like. A little, like an acid grenade. It's like a brick of uranium coming right at you. <laughs> Wait, why are why are all your superhero solutions to have something made of something and throw it at somebody? Because <laughs> <laughs> he said that about Batman with his weed better, and you just put weed and you just throw shit at people. <laughs> Dude, I don't have a good imagination. That's like as far as it goes. <laughs> you would have a good imagination, but you'll shit on my Chernobyl Chaco character. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just felt like, I mean, what else is he going to do? Dude, that's the thing is, this is just the first iteration. We have yet to. He just cooks a chimichanga in less than six, two seconds. But it's a radioactive chimichanga. Oh, so like it can't even feed people. (laughs) No, it can't. 
<laughs> so he's either uh, saving or killing anybody unless he's like yeah. yo eat this food that's the only thing is if somebody he's trying to po- poison somebody that's just well, like yeah. looking so at he, he opens up a catering company murders <laughs> <laughs> all of its clients <laughs> Look, I'm still working on the fire <laughs> Yes, all of his clients die. Of me. All of his clients die constantly. He'd make the perfect double agent. He he gets hired as a chef to the team that doesn't want him. Exactly. Think about it. Like, think about it. You you need a catering company to to cater your office party event. This office is like <laughs> some corrupt fucking Fortune 500 business that Chernobyl Chonga has, has a vendetta against, and so he inter intercepts. <laughs> Who wins in a fight, Chernobyl Chonga or uh, Leo DiCaprio in The Wolf of Wall Street? <laughs> <laughs> That is the most random. No, you're talking about him going for a Fortune 500 company or something like that. Like who wins in a fight? Uh, the Chernobyl. The wolf. Chernobyl Chonga. Nah, he could take he could take a radioactive chimichanga. Come on, and all the drugs. He's yeah, done. come on, that's not gonna stop him. Yeah, he's. Oh, no. This is like cancer imbuing radiation. Wait, what about yeah. what about Revenant Leo DiCaprio? <laughs> oh, yeah. see, that that I can take. Beating, uh, what's his name? Okay, so you're saying Chernobyl Chanka would lose to a bear? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the bear would be the easiest. You're just like, throw a... <laughs> We're all full circle back to me, suggesting somebody throwing something. But if you throw food at a bear, will he still try to eat you? Hmm. I don't know. You know? <laughs> 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 Uh, you get what I'm saying, dude? You get what I'm saying. Look, man. <laughs> uh, we'll bring it back. What are your guys? What do you guys speculate as to what's going to happen uh, in WandaVision in the future episodes? They're going to keep every episode is going to be like a newer and newer sitcom. Yep. See, but I think after a while, because so the season is nine episodes. There's six left. I can't imagine... I can imagine they only do like I think one or two more of those sitcoms. No, nah, they're doing it. They're doing it throughout up until the whole way through. Yeah, because I so so the next episode's got to be eighties, right? So what do they do? Fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, two thousands, two thousand tens, and then maybe the, the two episodes left are something different. But they are like because they said they're going to reference um, like The Office and Parks and Rec for 2010s. Yeah. And then for the 2000s, it's going to be like Malcolm in the Middle, which I'm so excited about. Like, I don't know how that's going to play. Yeah, that's cool. But I feel like she's going to like turn to the camera and be like, yeah, see, this is my life now. (laughs) But Malcolm in the Middle, let's do a podcast on that. That's one of the best shows of all time. Really? I actually hated that show when it came out. What? I just, for me, it, it was somewhere in the middle of you guys. I watched it, but only if, like, I couldn't find something else. Yeah, yeah that's how like I first was watched never it. Yeah. Go-to show. I, I highly recommend revisiting it. It's one of the funniest shows of all time, guaranteed. And not corny funny. Like, it's legit, like, laugh out loud funny. Is it, it? I don't doubt it. It's been years since I've watched it. I remember not liking it when I saw it. But honestly, there's a few movies that I like now that I remember when I first saw them, I thought was really fucking stupid. <laughs> What movies did you love when you were younger but didn't hold up well at all? Hmm. Most of them. (laughs) Okay, Uh. for me, the one that stands out the most that I loved as a kid and then as an adult, I tried to rewatch and was like, this is horrible, is Billy Zane in The Phantom. (laughs) That movie is stupid no matter how old you are. Yeah, you know what I'm talking fuck? about? Yeah, I agree with Jake. I always saw that movie at Blockbuster. No one ever rented it. No yeah, one no one ever. touched it. There was always copies of it left on the shelves. <laughs> I loved, it it you. I loved it. I was the kid that rented Billy Zane's The Phantom. Dude, that part, there's a part in that movie where Billy Zane tricks a character into defeat by making him check something out in the micro in a microscope, but then blades shoot into his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> a Chernobyl Changa is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid. I said racist. <laughs> I was racist. 
<laughs> I don't know. It just sounds like a wow. Chernobyl Chonga for a. It just sounds. I, I literally have a Mexican day labor character named Labor Tooth. <laughs> 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 labor tooth labor tooth Dude, this is not getting made this, <laughs> this is the universe is not actually it is and uh my friend joey <laughs> no, seriously, my friend joey murphy agreed to do the art if i make a comic and actually i was thinking we're gonna have him on the show because he's a really cool cartoonist and he loves comic books so he'd be cool to have him on the nice. show as well nice I was thinking we could have a bunch of people on the show. People like, dude, I always love when we'd be at your place, Anthony and uh, Torian would debate. Oh, yeah. He, he, like he'd want to do hero it. Battle. Yeah. He, oh, I know he would. So I figured we'll have him on Absolutely. at some point. For sure. Well, this wraps up our first episode of Comics and Chronic. I want to thank Anthony Inaccio and Cody Willaka Cannon for being our hosts. You guys are awesome. Uh, if no, you want to no. give us a follow, follow us on Instagram at Comics N. That's the letter N as in no. Chronic. Uh, we'll be posting hot and sexy content. <laughs> <laughs> but also, we'll just keep you updated as to our shows. Uh, thanks for listening. Hope you guys had fun. We'll be back next week and uh, give you some Hell new shit. Yeah. See you next week, guys. Adios. Peace bow, out. Bow, bow, bow. Oh, I have that app on my phone. I should use this. <laughs> the <air horn>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have the air, air horn. I have, yeah, remember? Hi, you're listening to Comics and Chronic, and I'm Jacob H. I'm Cody Cannon. And I'm Anthony Iannaccio. And you can tune in every Thursday to hear new episodes of Comics and Chronic. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at Comics and Chronic. That's Comics, the letter N, Chronic. We'll see you guys next week. Woo! Peace. Peace.